So you've gotten some views on Etsy. Great. Or maybe you haven't yet and you just came from watching part one. Also great. In part one, we discussed the four reasons why you may not be getting views on Etsy and how to fix that. And now we're going to turn those views into sales. Howdy friends, my name is Abby. This is Type 9 Studio, where I help you start and grow your Etsy shop into a small business. I've been a full-time seller on Etsy for over a year and a half. So if you want to know why you're getting a lot of views and no sales and how to fix that, keep on watching. So the term for turning views into sales is called conversion. This is measured in your Etsy stats by dividing the number of sales by the number of visits for a certain period of time. So here's an example so you can see how the math works. So for this example, there are 13,000 visits, 662 orders. So if you divide 662 by 13,000, that's 0 0.0509. And then you have to multiply that by 100 because it's a percent and that gives you about 5.1%. So a good conversion rate is between about one and 5% for any e-commerce site. And some days it'll be lower, some days it'll be higher. You just want to pay attention to your like average. Like I would look at it on like a monthly basis instead of like a daily basis, because some days if you get zero sales, it's obviously gonna be 0%. But if you're just starting out on Etsy and you've got like around 1% or like maybe even 0.75 to 1%, that's pretty good. And somewhat arguably, your conversion is more important than your views because you can pump a lot of views, a lot of traffic to a site or your Etsy shop. But if you don't know how to convert those into sales, it's not gonna do you any good. And side note, off topic of this video, um, none of these things involve paying for ads, but that is actually why I don't recommend new shops with a low conversion rate to pay for ads anywhere on Etsy or Google, Instagram, whatever, because um, if you don't know how to convert the traffic you already have, bringing more traffic is not going to help. And just in case you were wondering what Etsy calls a visit and a view, so visits are the people who view your shop or your listing, and then views are the amount of times they click on a listing. So one person is one visit, but could be multiple views because they may click on multiple listings. It's just a habit for me to call everything views because of social media, but when we're talking about Etsy, the conversion rate deals with visits. So what do you do if your conversion rate is lower than one to 5%? If you're getting a decent amount of views and visits, that's a good start. A low conversion rate just means there is something or some things that are preventing someone from actually checking out. Just for example, if you have a Shopify or another website that's not Etsy, the part of the conversion is going to be the actual checkout process itself. But on Etsy, you don't have to worry about that because Etsy does all that for you. But anyways, the good news is that your conversion rate can be fixed. So here are 10 things to look out for when you're trying to increase your conversions. Number one, are your keywords accurate to what the customer is searching for? So if they're misleading or inaccurate or clickbait, the buyer may click on the listing and then decide not to buy it once they read more information or if it just wasn't what they thought it was. Number two, are the photos a clear representation of the product? If it's not exactly clear from the main photo what the product actually is, someone may click on it and then again choose not to buy it once they read more or see more photos and realize it's not what they thought it was. Number three, are you using all 10 photos and a video? I said this in the last video, I feel like I'm gonna say it in every video, I ever make on this channel, but your photos and video are the only opportunity for your customer to experience your product. They need to be clear, well lit, and free of clutter or anything else distracting in the background. At least one photo should show a size reference so people can tell how big the item is. Number four, is the description thorough and easy to read? Nobody's gonna read a wall of text paragraph. So break it up into sections with bullet points and explain the product as if they don't know what it is. How do they use it? How do they wash it? How do they order it? What is it made of? How do you ship their order? Do you have a link back to your shop so they can find similar products? Number five, is the processing time fast? This is not easy if your items are personalized or made to order, but people will be put off by really long processing times. I recommend to stay within the one to three day range if at all possible, because buyers can filter their search results by one day or one to three days. And that's pretty much the norm for e-commerce. Like if people have to wait more than three days, that's a bit long. But again, people understand if it's personalized, it may take a bit longer. If you can't meet the one to three days, just make sure that your processing times are accurate and realistic to what you can actually do. Because number one, it's important for the customer. And number two, if you ship late, 
more than a few times, then Etsy will suspend your shop. So don't do that. Number six, what is the shipping cost? I think the verdict on free shipping is pretty split among Etsy customers. Like some expect it, some don't. I would not suggest to offer it on orders under $35, but if you don't offer this at all, or if your orders are pretty regularly under 35, then the price has to be reasonable. So the price that the customer actually pays for shipping should only be the shipping price that you pay. Do not add your packaging to your shipping, add your packaging to the product price. If you're in the US or another country that offers the calculated shipping rates, definitely use that because it's gonna be the cheapest option. So just for example, like a $10 flat rate shipping for something like a t-shirt is absurd because it should cost no more than $4. And people know that and they are going to just find someone else to shop with if your shipping prices are too high. Number seven, how is your customer service? Do you answer messages quickly? Are you patient and friendly? I don't know where this idea came from, but having an Etsy shop is not free reign to just be rude. So if you're working at a big retail chain and you make somebody mad, it's not going to damage the reputation of that store but it will definitely hurt your Etsy shop, especially if you're new and they leave a one-star review. Not good. Which brings me to number eight. Does your shop have any reviews? You can't force someone to leave a review, obviously, but you can remind them. You can do this with your order confirmations and also your packing slips. But if you ask for reviews, you better be offering some good customer service because people will let you know if you're not. Number nine, are there a lot of things to look at in your shop? So this means both your amount of listings and also your info sections. The more time someone spends browsing your shop, the more likely they are to make a purchase because that gives them time to make a connection with you. So the more stuff to look at, the better. And number 10, does your shop have a personality or does it show your personality? Just like with number nine, you want to connect with your potential customers and they can't really connect with a faceless wall of listings. So make sure you have a photo of yourself as the seller photo, share pictures of your workspace in the shop story section, write a compelling shop story, have consistent branding and messaging, share your values. All of those will set your shop apart from the competition and give you a leg up when you're building your customer base. And this is most important when you want to attract not only buyers, but fans of your shop. Because something else with this too is that a lot of people are skeptical of like mass produced and kind of fly by night, if you will, shops on Etsy because people go to Etsy for handmade things by an actual person. If they wanted something mass produced, they will go to Amazon, which unfortunately there's a lot of mass produced stuff on Etsy, but you know. So if you make it clear on your shop page and through your listings that you're an actual human that's making the products, people will be much more likely to make a purchase from you than someone else. Like I personally, I share my values on my shop that I am passionate about the environment and being eco-friendly, talk about how all my packaging is eco-friendly and people will write a note with their order or leave a review saying that they really appreciate that I share those values in my shop because that's what made them purchase my products over someone else's. And then if you do that, you build up some loyal customers and they will follow you if you decide to move or expand off of Etsy later on. And they're also likely to follow you on social media. So I went on a bit of a rant there, but those are the 10 ways you can increase your conversion rate. So let us know in the comments if you have any other tips for this, if you have any questions or anything that has worked for your shop. And if you've watched this whole thing and you haven't subscribed yet or click the like button, you might as well. I make new videos about Etsy every Wednesday and Saturday. For more Etsy tips, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok, both at Type9Studio. And if you want me to take a look at your shop specifically and give you suggestions on how to improve, you can do that through my Ko-Fi page as well. I'll have the links to all of those in the description. That is it for me today. I will see you in the next video and in the comments. Goodbye.